Whitling's prototype. Today we're going to be talking about deactivating faces. <clears throat> and I think that's going to be really important because if we have, we want to cut out as many options as possible. And if two cubes are touching, we want these faces that are up against each other to be completely off. You know, don't care about your path nodes, turn off your meshes, that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and by reducing the amount of active path nodes in the scene, I think that will make our job a little bit easier when we start to connect path nodes that are more complexly linked. So let's get that going. The first thing I think I'm going to do is in our scripts, our cube face spawner is actually doing two things. It's spawning the faces and it's keeping track of the faces. I actually don't want this face spawner to keep track of the faces. So let's put this into our cube core. Let's make this private as well. Always good to be explicit. Um, and all we need to do is get rid of these two. And our cube core is going to need to know about transform face container. And I don't believe this, I don't believe our faces need to know what direction they're facing, which is going to save us a lot of time. We can just use math to figure that out because spinning them all around and, you know, updating the direction seems like a lot of legwork with very little reward. Actually, I think that this whole crazy thing we did here uh, might still be necessary. So I'm going to write a new function, and let's call this deactivate hidden faces. <clears throat> oh, and we also, let's write another private function for get faces. So let's make sure this is working first. We're going to go through and get all of the faces. And we've done this a couple of times already, so this shouldn't be too much of a shock. Face container, child count. Oops, we want to do, make sure that child index is less than that. <coughs> so let's see. This is looping through all of the children, and I'm looking for the cube face. So I'm going to say cube faces at child index is equal to face container get child child index and then we're going to get the cube face component from that oh, what don't you like about that oh okay i thought so that's pretty straightforward so here we're going to get all of the hidden faces I oh, know we're just going to get all of the faces. Let's test that out. Uh, 
unassigned references probably of our face container. Yep. I'll apply that as well. Now let's see again. No errors, I like that. Interesting, so we weren't able to find cube faces. Hmm. Why didn't that happen there? Oh, that's good. That's really good. We got four enterings. That makes me pretty happy. I feel like there should have been a little bit more. But without any spinning, that is telling me that it knows that these, these two nodes here have determined that they've overlapped. Oh, geez, there should be a lot more than four here. That's okay. One step at a time. Let's get our faces hiding. And once we hide our faces, we're going to get rid of this um, really awful Z fighting that's happening, you can see right here. Uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. Face container child count. Oh. I wonder. I bet the faces haven't been made yet. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's why awake and start are differentiated. Because in our cube face spawner, in awake, we're creating these. So all the awakes run first, and then all of the starts. Let's try that now. Nice. OK, so it was able to find each of our <clears throat> faces. That's good. So, in our cube core, we find our neighbors. Let's try, let's go through this deactivate hidden faces. And so we're going to need to do another raycast here. Fun times. Oh, wait a minute. We're finding our neighbors. We know the direction the neighbor is in. Ah, but this is hard coded for our raycast directions. So a lot of this code is going to be the same. No, it's not going to be that similar. OK. Um, let's do a vector 3 for face position. So we'll grab that position, ray, and the origin is this transform position. 
And the direction, we're going from the cube core to the face. So we're going to say face position minus cube core. So I'm going to say if <clears throat> uh, physics raycast. Number 10 is my favorite, so we're going to pass ray, out, hit, distance, 0.51f, and the layer mask, once again, is going to be our cube core mask. Actually, hold on, let's try something. Layer mask dot get mask cube core. So if it does hit a cube core in that direction, I'm worried it's going to hit itself. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. Maybe it knows not to hit itself. That would be pretty nice. <coughs> So if it hits a cube core, I'm going to say cube faces at face index dot uh, game object set active false. Well, that should turn all of these ones off. We're not turning them on yet, but that's good for testing purposes. So we should have some of these that are off. They're not because we didn't call the function. Let's hop back up to start after we find our neighbors. Deactivate hidden faces. OK, cool. Very nice. Our first one has two faces off. So now if I spin this, there should be an empty face on the top. Again, empty. Oh, oh right. We're not checking. We're not calling this function at the right time. Enter should have two more. Four more. I bet it must have entered at the bottom, too. No. Oh, my. Hmm. We are getting a null reference exception from our cube core begin. Let's make sure that the cube core face exists. So if this face equals null, we can continue. Totally ignore that. That'll get rid of that error. Cool. <clears throat> so we are hiding these faces correctly. So what I'd like to do now is when the cube begins to rotate, I'm going to unhide all of the faces. And then when the cube is done rotating, I'm going to call this deactivate hidden faces function. So that seems to me like some events that we can deal with. And Unity action lives in the namespace Unity engine.events. On begin rotate. On end rotate. No, no, no. On rotate complete. Okay, so here's our cube controller. This is our selected rotator.
Sure, why not? Let's get a private select or er, cube core. Oh boy. Selected core. Oh, hey, core. And now with this here, we can get that whenever the new cube is selected. And here we'll say selected core dot on begin rotate. No, it's an event. We can't call events from other. So let's just have a, oh, wait, selected rotator, begin rotate. Ooh, you know what? Those events should be in the big cube rotator. And that cube rotator lives on the cube core itself. Excellent. Okay, good, good, good. Let's do a little bit of reorganizing here. And let's do the using Unity Engine dot Unity Events or just events. <clears throat> so begin rotating on begin rotate. We'll execute that, and then in here we know that the rotating is done on rotate complete. So our cube core now requires the component type of cube rotator. Let's have a reference to that that we can set up in a wake. So rotator equals get component cube rotator. And for now, let's just say rotator dot on rotate complete. We're going to add deactivate hidden faces. On begin rotate, we're going to add a function that doesn't exist yet, and we'll call this activate all faces. And this is going to be nice and easy. I'm going to copy pasta this here. I know I want to loop through all of the faces of the cube. And we'll just say cube faces at face index. I want the game object associated with that script. And we're going to turn it on. Now we should be able to watch our face container and see two faces turned off. And then when I rotate it, they should all turn on. And then now two different faces are turned off. There is still a little bit of a um, Z fighting thing here. Maybe instead of just turning them on and off, what I'll want to do is modify the renderer. 
so that the um, <clears throat> so that the alpha channel of the mesh sort of fades out over time. So maybe the alpha channel is like full alpha for 90% of the time. Although, you know what? <laughs> Let's make it. This is a way easier fix. Cube core begin. Let's just drop some no faces on it, right? Oh boy. Um. There we go, we'll rotate this. And how about negative 90 on the Z? Nope, dang it. <laughs> how about 90 on the X? That looks right. This will be negative 0 0.5 and negative 90 on the x. And we can see here that's wrong too, negative 90. And we'll duplicate this, negative 0.5, 90. <clears throat> I'm also going to shift select all of these and rename them all at the same time, just to no path face. And let's apply, there we go. So now that looks a lot better. We don't have that Z fighting. We have no extra work to do. Starting to look pretty cool. Not quite there yet. <clears throat> okay. So we have successfully <clears throat> hidden and shown our, or I guess deactivated and activated our <clears throat> cube faces. I've only been testing this in two dimensions. Let's make sure to test it in three, right? So let's do some extra duplicates. <clears throat> Whoa, hey, what's happening here? HTML files, cancel, cancel. What is that? Ooh. So now this cube here, which is our cube core one, <clears throat> should always have three hidden sides. Let's go even further and set it to, f oh, how are we gonna select it? <laughs> Um, let's do two on the X. So these should have four hidden sides on our cube core one. Nice. Yep. Cool. Let's move this up one and make sure that we have no hidden sides on it. Yeah, good. Because we do want our whittlings to be able to take this path here. <clears throat> Uh, 
Okay, so we have our faces hiding. We've lowered our problem space. Let's just have one cube core. Yeah, that's a problem. See, it did not recognize the overlaps with itself. So I was kind of hoping that these cubes would recognize that, hey, these two nodes are overlapping. That's our begin. I care about this core here. What happens if I add a rigid body? Entering node four. Okay. <clears throat> so it appears that we're going to need a rigid body on each face, but not a rigid body on each core. Let's try that. Let's get rid of this rigid body here. And our straight path face. I'll add a rigid body, no gravity, kinematic. Eight nodes being entered. Let's modify our node entering to say, so path node, I want to say this transform.parent.parent. .parent. And we'll do other transform parent parent name. Oops, we need a name here too. So up straight path faces node. I knew naming these would be good. So this node here is entering forward straight path node. Boop. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so it with the rigid bodies attached to the faces instead of the cube core, now these objects can see that they are overlapping triggers that are not on their own face. <clears throat> Let's go back to the drawing board before we end it here. Ooh, I wonder... What would happen if we did this here? Well, we got two left straight path faces. Oh, that's these two that are connecting. Oh, cool. Those are turned off. 
Ooh. Yeah, I think the order of operations is really important here. <clears throat> We want to hmm. So we want to deactivate as early as possible. And hopefully this deactivate will happen before the trigger enter. So maybe we want to deactivate in awake. Ah. Maybe we can make deactivate hidden faces public, and once the cube spawner is done, nope. So now that the faces have been created, turn off. Deactivate hidden ones. So I'm going to get the component cube core. Deactivate hidden faces. And we're going to need to make this public cube core. Do, 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 do. Just to keep things nice and organized, we'll put it in the public member function section. Let's see, we had four. I thought we had two of those. Let's try this again. Interesting. So here this time we only had two left straight paths, which is right because this left straight hit this left straight. What I find very interesting is that we have three up straight path entering back straight path. Up straight, entering this one, this entering this one, this entering this one. Aha, uh -huh, so that's where the third one is. So two from the two cubes touching and one from this one touching itself, which is perfect because that means that this cube. Oh! What? None of these are turned off anymore. But why? Oh, my guess is that we didn't do a find, we didn't do the get faces. Find cube core, core. We're going to need to call get faces publicly too. And the reason I'm moving this get faces into
where I'm calling it from this other script is to make certain that before any of these on trigger enters can happen, we deactivate the things that we don't care about anymore. Index out of range. Okay, so the cube, <laughs> this is kind of tricky. The cube face spawners awake is running before our cube core awake, which is what this original solution was. So I'm going to move this setup here to here. Because we got this index out of range error, and I believe that's what was happening. Hey, cool. They both have one off. How's this looking? Up straight and up straight touched. Cool. Left straight, left straight are touching. What is this? Up straight is entering forward straight. What about back? OK. So I do believe with our goofy setup of all straight pieces, there are a lot of touching things. Yeah. Yeah, we got a full loop around here. <clears throat> but these do seem correct. Down straight, entering down straight, cool. So we should have one. Left, up, down, right. Excellent. So it does seem like our path nodes are connecting. We're hiding the appropriate faces at the right time. The faces that have been hidden are not registering path node overlaps. Excellent. And does everything still work? That's the question. You can kind of see as I rotate here that this thing is still hidden. That's exactly what we want. As I rotate, you can see different items are turned off. Also what we want. Good, good. I still cannot rotate this one. Excellent. So now that we have our faces turning on and off, we should be able to use this overlap data to start building a path of connections. And I think that's what we're going to do later today. My name is Billy Lemonzest. Thank you so much for watching.